Hello again, as you know, I am Eli, the computer guy, and today's class is setting disk space quotas on Windows Server 2012. So disk space quotas, again, are one of those fabulous, fabulous, fabulous things that you can do in the Windows world, very easy, that will make your life just so much simpler as an administrator. So when you go out there, into the real world, into the enterprise world, one of the things that you are going to find is that in the enterprise world, most people do not need nearly as much storage, disk space, as they do in the consumer world. So when you go home at night and you're dealing with your wife, you're dealing with your kids, you're dealing with your own computers, you may think you may need 500 gig hard drive, a terabyte hard drive, a four terabyte hard drive, because you have so much stuff to store, right? You've got videos, you've got music, you've got massive pictures, you've got video games, the whole nine yards. Well, when you go into the enterprise world, it's very easy to think that in the enterprise world that users, employees need the same amount of storage space. It's very easy to think, oh my golly, I've got a thousand users and they're all gonna need five terabytes of storage on the server, right? Well, in reality, in reality, employees and users don't need nearly that much space. In reality, many employees, probably most employees, only need about two to three gigs of storage space in the work environment. The reason being is because when you're at work, you really, most of us, shouldn't be downloading videos, we shouldn't have huge picture files, we shouldn't have our entire iTunes library on our computers. Basically, when we are dealing with our work computers, we should have Word documents and spreadsheets and PowerPoint, and, and that's about it, right? You, you don't need that much storage space. Well, Sometimes, because most employees don't need that much storage space, administrators will become lulled into thinking none of their users will use very much storage space. The administrator will create a shared folder on a server, allow users to upload as much data as they want, and then all of a sudden, either the server crashes or everybody runs out of storage space, they're not able to share files and folders to that shared folder on the network, and the reason is, is because one or two people decided to upload their entire iTunes movie collection up to that file server and it just made everything go to hell. <laughs> I actually had this once uh, with a end user, a CEO actually, who synchronized his iPod with 500 or whatever gigs of music and videos to his laptop computer. The laptop computer then ac accidentally synchronized to the server and again caused a mess. So what can we do to stop this? Well, within the Windows Server 2012 world, this has been around for a while, they now have quotas. So you can actually say how much data users can upload or have in a folder on a network share. So you can create your little shared folder on your server and then say users can have a max limit of 100 megabytes or 100 gigabytes or 5 terabytes or 2 megabytes. Whatever you decide should be the quota, you can very easily set that up. So this is a very good tool to use in an environment where you have a lot of users because you can set up this quota system and then you don't have to worry about one little moron uploading their entire iTunes collection and trying to crash everything. So when we set up these quotas, there's a couple of very nice pieces of functionality with the quota system in Windows Server 2012. The first very nice functionality is, as I was saying, you can create something called a hard limit. So a hard limit means when the user hits this much storage space, they are done. They get no more whatsoever. That's it. So the hard limit is when you hit that amount and you don't get any more. Well, one of the other pieces of functionality you can have is something called a soft limit. So the soft limit, what happens is when somebody hits that limit, 
they can continue to go past that limit, but a whole bunch of alerts and notifications go off to say, warning, warning, Will Robinson, you are using up too much data. So this can be very good, especially when you're dealing with C-level executives. Now again, I know I keep talking about different types of employees and how you should treat different types of employees, and I'm sure there's a lot of proletariats out there that are really pissed that I keep talking about how C-level executives should get preferential treatment over COGS. Well, in the real world, C-level executives get preferential treatment over COGS. You know, when you have the call center employees, when you have the warehouse workers, when you have the administrative assistants, they get a different level of respect than the C-level executives. So with the COGS, with, with the people that basically are the low-level replaceable employees, you can give them the hard limits where as soon as they hit that limit, they can't go over, they can't do any more. Basically, that's the only amount of storage they get. Well, when you're dealing with the C-level executives, you don't want to do that. Because <laughs> you, as a little geek, you don't want to be telling the boss what the boss is going to be doing. Because that's going to turn into all kinds of nastiness. So with the bosses, what you can do is you can do these things called soft limits. Where when they hit the limit, all kinds of alarms and buzzers and alerts go off but they're still allowed to put more data on there. Why? Because they're the bosses. So that is one of the useful functionalities. So you can send off all the alerts. So as soon as a C-level executive hits that limit, what you can do is you can go to them and you can say, hey, look, you got the alert, I got the alert, you're using more than your quota, that's fine. Now what you what now that can ha what can happen is either you as a C level executive can delete some of your stuff or you as a C level executive can give me a bigger budget so I can go out and buy more storage space. So you as a C level executive, you make the decision. Either of those decisions is fine by me but you allow them to make that. So that's what that soft limit allows you to do. Not only that, but uh, before you hit the soft limit or the hard limit, you can hit um, thresholds, notification thresholds, to say when alerts should be sent off. So if somebody is using 80% of their limit, should an email be sent off to an administrator or should an email be sent off to the user to say, hey, just so you know, you are using 80% of your limit, you may, be, you may wanna think about deleting uh, files or, fo or folders right now. So these are some of the parts of the functionality that are very, very, very useful for the quota system. Again, it's these stupid little tools that I know as a new person you may not think are that impressive or that cool, but remember, when you're dealing with hundreds or thousands of users, a simple little quota system is just completely and utterly the bee's knees. Now, we're gonna go to the computer. I'm gonna show you how to set this up because it's very easy. It's very, very, very easy to configure. Now, one of the warnings that I will give you, though, is the tool that we are going to be using called the File Server Resource Manager, MMC, is not installed by default on Windows Server 2012. You have to go into the Add Roles and Features and actually add that function functionality in. So if you go to tools and you don't see this MMC snap in, remember you have to add in the functions and features and when you do, then it will actually show up. So let's go over to the computer now so I can show you, oops, so I can show you how this works uh, because it is, it's, it's just a really, really wonderful little tool. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go down to server manager. So server manager, again, is kind of like the hub where everything is. Now I have already installed the file server resource manager, but if you have not done so yet, what you're gonna do is from server manager, you're gonna click on manage here, and then you're going to go to add roles and features. From here, you just do next, do next, you do next. This is what we're gonna be looking for. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go down and we're going to look for the file and storage services. This is what we're going to be looking for. And most likely, this is already checked off for you. So what you need to do is you need to expand it you then need to expand file and iSCSI services. And then what you're gonna be looking for is this, file server resource manager. So I have already installed it, 
but you probably have not. So then what you would do is you would check off this box and then you would go and you would do next, 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 next. So, so go down, drill down the file server resource manager, check off the box and then hit next, 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 next. Once you have done that, you will be able to go up to tools and then you will have the MMC snap in. So file server resource manager. So we can click on that. And this brings up the control panel that we'll use for quotas. So what we're gonna be using today is this quota management utility. So basically we just expand that and under this we have two tools. So we have quotas and quota templates. Now again, remember, 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 remember that in the Windows world, we want to be creating templates and groups as much as possible. So you don't want to assign permissions or quotas or anything. We, we want to be able to like group as many things as possible. Instead of creating individual quotas, we want to create like a template so we can assign it to numerous people. So whenever we're dealing with Windows Server, we're always thinking about how can we make this as large as possible. So what we can do then is instead of creating individual quotas, we can create what are called quota templates. And they already have a number of default quota templates. So we have like one here for the 100 megabyte limit. So if we right click this and then we do edit template properties, we can see what this 100 megabyte limit has. So it's a 100 megabyte limit. It is a hard quota. So if somebody hits the 100 megabyte mark, they won't be able to, to put any more data into that folder. We can see, I talked about the notifications before, at the warning, at the 85% level, an email will get sent out. At the 95% level, an email, an event log, will get sent out and that the 100% level, again, the email and event log. So this is one of the default templates that has already been created. So if we wanna create our own template, all we do here is we right click and then we do create quota template. So basically what we're gonna do is we're not gonna copy, we're gonna give it a name. So we're gonna say that our users can get 100 gigabytes of storage space. So 100, and then we're gonna go to gigabytes. So it's now 100 gigabytes, we do 100 terabytes, 100 gigabytes, 100 kilobytes, whatever you want. Then we're going to say, is it a hard quota or a soft quota? We're gonna leave it at hard. We don't want our users using any more than 100 gigs. And then we can put in notification thresholds. So we can add a notification. Up here is where you say the percentage. So when somebody gets to this percent, what happens? So the default is 85%. So let's say the 85%, you can have it send an email to the following administrators and you can put in the administrator email. And we can say, send an email to the user who exceeded the threshold. Again, we wanna keep our users in the communication loop as much as possible. If we can have the system automatically tell them they're doing something wrong, then that makes them mad at the system. It doesn't make them mad at us. So basically we can have this, so it'll send them an email. Then down here, it'll actually, you, we can actually type out what we want the subject to be, and we can say what we want the, the, uh, the message body to be. So the user, so source owner, quarter threshold, blah, 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 and we can insert some other variables. The other thing we can do down here is we can put in additional email headers, and we can do carbon copies and blind carbon copies. One of the useful tools here is, again, if you are having problems with users, it is better that their, ma their management deals with them than you. Whenever you walk in, remember, everybody hates a geek. Well, if you can have the managers, the employees' managers, dealing with this problem instead of you, that can make your life a lot easier. So you could have this notification be carbon copied to their manager so that the management can deal with it. Again, you get out of the loop. So you can do that here. You can go to event log, so you can say I want a warning sent to the event log. You can actually have a command run 
um, and we can just do a normal report. So these are all the things. So you can create multiple notifications. So um, we can do an 85% uh, notification, then we can do a 90% notification, basically whatever you want to have happen, you can just keep adding all of these things here. So this is the template that you will have created. So now what we can do is we can go over to the quotas and actually set a quota for a shared folder on the network. So right in here, we can do a create a quota and then we're going to say what the quota path is. So what folder are we creating a quota on? So we already have that shared folder from uh, the, uh, the lesson that we did before. So we have this shared folder with a private and public. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quota on share. So I can do that. Then what I can do is uh, I can go down and here I can either do a custom quota property where we generally don't want to do or we can drive properties from a quota template. So basically we can just go here, we can go to our 100 gigabyte uh, quota template and we can just assign that template to this share and then we hit create. So now any of the folders in that share users can only store up to 100 gigabytes of data. Um, as soon as they go over those notification limits they start getting alerts so on and so forth. So that's really all there is to quotas. Again, this is a simple little tool that is going to make your life easier in the real world. And this is especially one of those good little tools that you want to set up as preventive maintenance. Even if you're not having problems with this now, you set this up in the future just so you won't have problems in the future. Again, one CEO who synchronizes his iPod to his laptop that synchronizes to the server and it can cause all kinds of a mess. Imagine if you know one of the secretaries or something like that again synchronizes all kinds of data goes up onto the network and then it's just yeah. If you set a quota where they only get about 10 gigs of storage space then they may cause a problem for themselves but they're not going to cause a problem for the entire network. So this is what you can do with disk space quotas. Again the hard limit means once the user hits that limit they can go no further. Soft limit means they can go further but just a whole bunch of alarms and bells and whistles go off, notifications go off and that type of thing. The notification levels allow you to say that at the 80% limit, I want an email to go to the user. At the 90% limit, I want an email to go to the user and the administrator. At the 95% limit, I want an email to go to the user, the administrator and the user's manager. Again, as much as you can stay out of the middle of all that mess, uh, the better for you. So that's basically the simple what there is for quotas. Now when you're setting the quotas now, it will be set for the entire folder and it will be set for all users of that folder. So all, all users get a maximum of, of whatever that quota is. If you want to create different quota levels, then you should create different folders and assign different quotas to those folders. Again, this can get a little complicated because now you're starting to deal with permissions. You're starting to deal with shared folders and permissions and quotas. But hey, you guys are starting to understand how all this stuff works now, so, uh, so you should be able to figure it out. Again, as always, make sure you set up your virtual lab. Make sure you start playing with it because that's how you're going to learn all this stuff. Um, now the material that, that I talked about today, again, as I keep talk, telling you guys, uh, Windows Server 2012 Unleashed by Sam's. This is a good book. This book has the information on these quotas plus a lot of uh, additional stuff. So if you're a little confused or if you want more info, again, go to Amazon for 30 or 40 bucks. You can buy this book and it will make your life a lot easier. So as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. This class was setting disk space quotas on Windows Server 2012. As always, I enjoyed teaching this class and look forward to seeing you on the next one.